Say we have this given linear system and we want to find the solution. That is, we want to get the values for variables x, y, z that will satisfy these equations. If we want to know more about the elimination method for us to get the solution for this linear system, please click that eye icon there for that suggested video. In this video, we will discuss the algorithm in getting the solution using the back substitution method. Let's have first the augmented matrix of this given linear system. Note that in augmented matrix, we have to have the coefficients of this given linear system with respect to the given variables. And of course, that the last column would be the constants. Notice that the first column will have the coefficients of the variable x. Second column will have the coefficients of the variable y. Third column will have the coefficients of the variable z. And yes, the last column will have their corresponding constants. Once we have the augmented matrix, we have to perform elementary row operations to produce triangular array of zeros. Thus, if you have this kind of augmented matrix, your triangular array of zeros look like this. Let's have some labels. This would be our first row or our sub 1, this is our sub 2, and this would be our sub 3. Before you start with the elementary row operations, it's preferable to check first if we have first entry to be 1. That will be our pivot point, so we have to have that as a first entry at the first row. That gives you a hint that we have to interchange rows 1 and 2. Thus, we now have this. Note that if you don't have 1 in the first column, you have to produce 1 by dividing the entire row by that number. Say we have that first entry to be 8 and you want that to be 1. Clearly, you have to divide the entire row by 8 so that that first entry will become 1. Having 1 as a pivot point, it will be easy for us to make the rest of the entries in the column that contains 1 to be 0. That is, we just have to multiply 1 by negative 2 and add that to this row so that we'll have 0. In the same manner, we have to multiply 1 by negative 3 so that we'll have 0 in this row. Hence, we now have negative 2 times the first row and add that to our second row. And we have negative 3 times the first row then we have to add that to the third row. Having negative 2 as a multiplier to our first row, we now have this. Having the product to be added to its corresponding entry in the second row, we now have 0 for the first entry of the second row because that would be negative 2 plus positive 2. Next would be negative 8 plus 5, that gives us negative 3, and negative 14 plus 8 gives us negative 6, while negative 20 plus 11 would be a negative 9. If you want to be reviewed on operations of integers, just have that suggested video. As for the new entries in our third row, we have to have first a multiplier negative 3 to the first row, thus we now have this. And having those products to be added to its corresponding entries on the third row, we now have this. See, having one as the pivot point, it is easy for us to have these entries to be zeros. Now, let's make this negative 3 to be 1 so that this will be a pivot point for the second column. Generally, these ones that we have here are being called leading ones. Notice that when negative 3 becomes a positive 1 and having it multiplied to a positive 6, it's easier for us to just add this to the negative 6 in the third row to have a 0. 
So to have negative 3 to be a positive 1, we have to multiply the second row by negative 1 third, or that is, we're dividing the entire row by negative 3. This is the one that I mentioned earlier. That is, if we multiply 1 by a positive 6 and add that to negative 6 here, this would be 0. Making negative 6 to be 0 here is definitely what we want because we are forming a triangular array of zeros. Hence, we have to have a multiplier 6 to the second row and add that to our third row. Having 6 to be multiplied to the second row, we now have this. And adding the corresponding product to the entries of the third row, we now have this. If we make this entry to be a positive 1, this augmented matrix will now be in row echelon form. Clearly, to make positive 3 a positive 1, we just have to divide this by 3 or to multiply that by a 1 third. Observe that the last two entries in the third row would mean that z is equal to 1. For the benefit of others, if this becomes 4, it means that z is equal to 4. Converting this augmented matrix back to its original linear form, we now have this. And since z is equal to 1, we now have this. Again, for the benefit of others, this would be the coefficients for our variables x, y, z. And so, the first row would be this. And substituting the obtained values for y and z, we now have this for our variable x. Therefore, the solution for this given linear system would be a negative 1, 1, and 1. Graphically, solution would be the common point in a given linear system. Equivalently, that would be the intersection of the given planes or the given lines.
Can you now solve this? Heads up, we can definitely have fractions in a given matrix, okay? 